the mother of all aliens. Today we're taking a look at Hyatt Toys' exquisite mini, Aliens, Alien Queen. Welcome back. Now before we look at the Alien Queen in our packaging, my question for you today is, what was your first Hyatt Toys figure if you collect them? And if you don't, what one would you buy first? For me, the Queen was the first one, even though it took a while for her to ship. I've always wanted a queen. The Neko queen looked amazing, but it was very big and very expensive. This is the perfect size and the perfect price, so I'm so happy to get her in hand. And speaking of the queen, here's her box here. There is a small typo. That's okay. It's what's inside that counts. Not a whole lot going on with the box. Just a picture of the figure there. Aliens on the side. A picture of the queen from the movie on the back. So let's get her open and see how she looks. So doing things a little bit differently for normal, we're going to start by looking at her accessories. First, she comes with four of these stands here. You also get eight of these little brackets, which you can clip to any of the slots here and connect to another base. Now the base, it will be necessary for the queen because of her design. She's not physically capable of standing. They tricked it for the movie. So you do get this clear pole here, which just slots into the peg hole here, excuse me, into the peg, nice and tight, and then this will support her chest area. You also get two of the inner mouths to put in. You get this long one and a short one, and there is some assembly required for the queen here. These spikes need to be attached to her back here. You see the holes there. This is presumably so they didn't get damaged in transport. So we'll go ahead and do that and then take a look at the queen. And ladies and gentlemen, I am proud to present Her Majesty, the Alien Queen. And wow, what a figure. But before we take a look at her, we'll measure her up, see how tall she is. She stands just about seven and a half inches with her head posed down like that or about 19 centimeters. And turning her to the side, pose like this. In terms of length, she's about six inches to the start of her tail here. We'll just turn her around. We'll bring in the alien's overmorph, the egg that we reviewed earlier, so you can see how it measures up. Just above her ankle there. And here is the alien warrior that we looked at earlier too. So she is significantly bigger than the regular xenomorph, of course. Taking a look at the queen in detail, I have to say this is absolutely incredible. What an amazing job they've done here. As you can see, she's done in a very nice blue color with a black, black wash, picking out all the detail in there striping along the side just like the warrior along to the face love those nice clear teeth there not chrome like the regular xenomorphs marks her head as being very different her crown area here does slide forwards and backwards like in the film Her jaw does open up, and you can see there is a slot there to insert her inner mouth. Take the long one here, insert it, and then you can see the inner jaw in the queen. Personally, I won't be displaying it with the inner jaw, I like it just closed. The smaller jaw would probably be a lot more difficult to put in there. I personally wouldn't put it in there. You wouldn't really see it in her mouth anyway. I would just leave the, the jaw out if you're not using the big extended one. As we move along her back, here's the spikes that you have to put in. Be very, very careful putting these in. They can be tricky. The problem is that when you push it in, you don't want to put too much pressure on the spike there because it is a thin, little ball peg you don't want to snap that off because if you snap that off you cannot attach that unless you glue it in there 
so be very careful. Maybe even heat it up. It took me about 10 minutes to get these in, so yeah, it's not the uh, most fun process in the world, but they are in there. And like I said, they are on ball pegs, so you can articulate them. They do have these little uh, kind of shell-like designs that swoop out. I don't know if I put them on the right side or not, but uh, that's the way they are, and that's the way they're staying. If you go back, kind of a dog-like body, kind of a precursor to the dog alien from Alien 3. You get her big spiky tail here. This is done in a soft rubber. You move down, animal-like legs, and yes, James Cameron did give the queen high heels. We are on back to the front. <clears throat> we have our main set of arms here, and our little T-Rex arms. Kind of grayish brown dry brushing all along her body there. So overall, absolutely spectacular figure. This is an amazing release from Haya Toys. To deliver a figure of this size with this much detail for only $40, it's absolutely amazing. I don't know how they do it, but they did it. So taking a look at articulation, the queen does have a ball peg at the base of her neck there, which gives her very nice rotation. There is a little bit of a rotation at the top there, but most of her movement will be coming from down there. Like I said, the jaw is articulated and the head does move a little bit up and down. And her crown section does pull forwards and backwards. The spikes on the back are on ball pegs, just be very careful with them. The tail is a bendy tail. With the wire going right about there. For her main arms, they will rotate all the way around. Just be careful of hitting the spikes on the back there. You do have a single bent elbow. Not a whole lot of movement out of it. The hands do rotate, but they don't seem to be on any kind of ball peg or anything like that like they usually are. Her T-Rex arms are on ball pegs there, but they don't bend at the elbows. Coming down to the body, we do have a, I guess you could call it an ab crunch there, which will allow her to swivel around. The legs do spread really good and can move up and down. She does have a little bit of a knee there, as well as rotation down here, and a tiny bit at the toes there. So she's not very maneuverable, but uh, the design of the creature itself makes that impossible. In the film, it's basically just one big puppet, and they did a lot of cheating to get her to move around. So overall, this is an amazing figure that is definitely worth the wait. If you're only going to get one Hyatoys alien, this is the one to get, in my opinion. It's big enough that it can stand on its own on a shelf and will attract a lot of attention. Hyatoys is also making an alien resurrection version, which should be the exact same queen, but painted in a brown color scheme. That's what they did in the film. They took the actual aliens prop and painted it brown. There's also an Alien vs. Predator version with some battle damage and the green acid blood, which looks pretty cool too. If you're interested in more High Toys Alien and Predator figures, I have reviewed many of them and I have more to come, so be sure to subscribe if you don't want to miss those. But for now, I just want to say thank you very much for watching and I'll see you later. Bye.